In this video, we're going to talk about units and measurement. Okay, so first, there's different measurement systems. There's an array of different measurement systems. So SI is a measurement system. US customary is a measurement system. There's CGS, FPS. But the goal for the future is to have SI be the worldwide standard for measurement. So we're just going to focus on SI. However, in the year 2023, English units are still used, particularly in the United States. And so we're going to focus on English units as well. So you can also understand exactly how this system works. Okay, so first of all, I keep saying English units. I'll sometimes say U.S. customary. I'm saying, I'm saying SI. I'm throwing around these different terms. In general, what I'm talking about is the metric system and English units. So for the metric system, the metric system was invented in the 1700s during the French Revolution. It gained popularity. A lot of people were using it. And as it became more popular at some point, there needs to be some organization to it. And so governing bodies are established that can create a system of rules for using the metric system. And these rules help all measurements and scientific work across the world become more uniform. It makes communication easier. SI is the, is the current governing body for the metric system. SI was established in 1960. So you'll hear this called SI, that's System International, or you'll also hear it called the International System of Units. That's all the same thing. Or you'll also hear it called the metric system. That's all you're saying SI. And so SI is to the metric system as U.S. customary is to English units. English units is the raw system, and then the governing body is U.S. customary. This governing body was established in 1832, and you'll sometimes hear people say imperial units, the imperial system. That's technically not correct. U.S. customary is not, is not the imperial system. They're similar, but it's not technically the same thing. But you're talking about English units here. Okay, so in any system of units, we're, we're dealing with quantities. So all of, all of these are quantities, and anything else we measure is a quantity. A quantity is can be defined as a, as a property of a phenomena, body, or substance to which a number can be assigned with respect to a reference. So that's, that's the key term there is reference. Quantities are relative to a reference. The reference can be a measurement unit, a measurement procedure, or a reference material. Okay, now any system of measurement is going to define certain quantities as base quantities. These are the base quantities of the SI system. Now, technically, any unit system can choose its own base quantities. However, quantities like length, mass, and time, for example, these are so fundamental that a unit system is going to have to choose one or more of these as a base quantity. So what do I mean by fundamental? One of the definitions of a base quantity is that no base quantity can be expressed as a simple product of the other base quantities. If it can, then it's called a derived quantity. So all other quantities like volume, area, energy. So volume is length cubed. Area is length squared. Force is mass times length over time squared. Energy is just force times distance. So mass length squared over time squared. Power is just energy per unit time. But I can't say length is what? Yes, it's the cube root of volume, but that's not a, that's not a, a base quantity. Volume is not a base quantity. One of the other properties of base quantities is that they all require a reference from nature or from the physical world to serve as their official definition. That's in essence what makes them completely independent. And it's this reference that creates the unit for that quantity. So for length, the definition of length in the SI system is where the, the, unit, the unit of the meter comes from. The fundamental unit in the SI system for length is the meter. Now, technically, you only need three base quantities to have a system of units. If you use length, mass, and time as your base quantities, then you can define all other quantities that we measure. Why is that? Because, because temperature, temperature we know is the, 
is a measure of the average kinetic energy of molecules or atoms in a substance. Well, energy, we talked about, that's just mass, length, a relation of mass, length, and time. Electric current comes from a potential. That's energy. Amount of substance, that's just a count. And then luminous intensity, so intensity is, is an energy over an area. Energy is mass, length, and time. Area is, is length. However, the SI system, or the International System of Units, decided to have seven base quantities with specific units for each. And the reason is that they felt that these seven base units described the other units more compactly and conveniently. But for example, the CGS system of units only has three base quantities, the centimeter, the gram, and the second. And so you might be saying, well, since temperature is an energy, then we can express temperature in terms of the base quantities. And we said that one of the definitions of a base quantity is that it can't be expressed in terms of the other base quantities. The way you can think about that is that definition is saying it can't, a base quantity can't be simply expressed by a product of powers of the other base quantities. So a product of powers, volume is length cubed, force is mass times length times time to the minus two. For temperature, the energy, the average kinetic energy is more complicated, the formula for that. It's like, a, like E to the something, I think, or it's, it's a complicated formula. So, that, so that's the difference. Okay, so let's go through all of the base units for the SI system, the official definitions for each of these quantities. And at the same time, we'll do U.S. customary. But it's important to note that all unit systems outside of the SI, the definitions of their fundamental units reference the SI system. So all of the quantities in nature, all of the physical quantities that we reference in the world for for our dimensions, our units, are, are done by the SI system. All other systems reference the SI system. And I think this is because it's the intention that one day the SI system becomes the worldwide standard for measurement. Okay, so the fundamental unit for length in the SI system is the meter. What is the official definition of the meter? The meter is the length of the path traveled by light in vacuum during a time interval of... One two hundred ninety nine million seven hundred ninety two thousand four hundred fifty eighth of a second. So one over the speed of light of a second, that fraction of a second. But what they do is they take advantage of the wavelengths of specific forms of light. They use lasers, which a laser is emitting a single wavelength of light. And then with techniques in interferometry, they can consistently reproduce a length dimension at this extreme level of precision. Okay, now in U.S. customary, the fundamental unit for length is the foot. The foot is defined to be exactly 0 .3048 meters long. So you see it's defined in terms of the meter. The fundamental SI unit for mass is the kilogram. And the reference is the international prototype of the kilogram kept in air under these three bell jars at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in Paris. It's a cylinder made of an alloy of 90% platinum and 10% iridium. Due to the inevitable accumulation of contaminants on its surfaces, the international prototype is subject to reversible surface contamination, approaching one microgram per year in mass. For this reason, the International Committee for Weights and Measures declared that pending further research, the official definition of the kilogram is the weight of this prototype immediately after cleaning and washing the prototype by a specified method. And if the kilogram is used for calibrating a certain number of days after cleaning, then its mass is calculated by the relation. You take one kilogram and add to that 0 0.0368 times the number of days since it's been cleaned, and that's in micrograms. Okay, the fundamental unit for mass in the U.S. customary system is the pound mass or the slug. And the pound mass is defined to be 0.4535 kilograms. And later in the video, we'll talk about what the slug is. The unit of time in both the SI and the US is the second. And the second 
has been the most consistent among all the unit systems. It's, it's been the most universally adopted. But you could potentially have different units for time. Currently, the reference for the second is, comes from the, from the use of an atomic clock. The second is the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. So it's just a something that they can, a, a duration that they can reproduce at an, at an extremely high level of precision. Okay, temperature in SI, the fundamental unit is Kelvin. In U.S. customary, it's degrees Fahrenheit. Now, now degrees Celsius is not a fundamental unit, but it's also part of SI. You can use it in SI. And so Celsius is kind of the parallel to degrees Fahrenheit. And then the parallel to, K to Kelvin in U.S. customary is Rankin. It's the absolute temperature scale in U.S. customary. And so with temperature, you need two points, two reference points to define the temperature scale. And with an absolute temperature scale like Kelvin or Rankin, you have absolute zero. That's one point. The second point is based on the triple point of water. And the International Committee for Weights and Measures recently clarified the definition of the triple point of water by specifying the isotopic composition of the water to be that of Vienna Standard Mean Ocean Water. And so here is a, looks like a rough calibration of a, of a thermometer. And, and this just goes to show you that you don't necessarily have to use the most extreme precise reference there is for calibrating every single instrument. You know, I'm sure this is not Vienna standard mean ocean water. And similarly, if you go buy a tape measure from Lowe's, that probably hasn't been calibrated with some reference that referenced the speed of light. Factories that make tape measures, they're, what they calibrate all of their tape measures with most likely doesn't need to be that expensive. But these extremely precise definitions for these units, it, it's, it, it's there if you need it. For example, time... There might be systems that need to reference atomic clock level precision, communication systems, satellites, where thousands of fraction of a second can add up and cost a lot of money or, or even have the system not work, need to have that precise of time measurement systems. Okay, both the SI and the U.S. customary use the ampere for electric current. The ampere is defined to be that constant current which, if maintained in two straight parallel conductors of infinite length of negligible circular cross-section and placed one meter apart in vacuum, would produce between these conductors a force equal to two times 10 to the minus seventh, seven newtons per meter of length. Okay, the amount of substance... in both SI and US is the mole... And go check out the, uh, the video on, on what is the mole for this definition. It's, it's the number of carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Luminous intensity in SI is the candela. So candela comes from the word candle. The candela is the luminous intensity in a given direction of a source that emits monochromatic radiation of frequency 540 times 10 to the 12 hertz. And that has a radiant intensity in that direction of 1 683rd watt per steradian. Okay, and in U.S. customary units, this is the foot candle. And the foot candle is defined as 1 lumen per square foot. And a lumen is a unit in the SI system, not a fundamental unit. And a lumen is a measure of the perceived power of visible light emitted by a source. Now, technically, U.S. customary treats mass as a derived quantity. So pound mass and slug are derived units. And instead, they treat pounds force. So they treat force as a fundamental quantity. And this is a little confusing because you could say, well, isn't 
isn't mass one of those inherently fundamental quantities? But if you look at Newton's second law, so like in SI, the unit for force is the Newton. That's a derived unit. The Newton is if you apply a force to a one kilogram mass and it accelerates by one meter per second squared, then you know you're applying a force of one Newton. But in a roundabout way, you can say, if I'm applying a force of one Newton to a mass and that mass ends up accelerating by one meter per second squared, then, then I know I have one kilogram. So now the kilogram is, is derived. So you're saying F is its own unit. And so what you have is F over length per time squared. So M, this derived unit, is F T squared over L. And you're treating F like it's, a fundam like it's its own fundamental quantity, similar to what you do for length and time and mass and SI units. I don't know why U.S. does that. It's, it, to me, it's a little confusing. I, I, I feel like mass is much more fundamental. But when you think about how mass and weight are kind of intertwined, you know, you have the, the kilogram, you know, you have the, in Paris, the, the official kilogram. But we think about that fundamentally that we know the weight of that, not the mass of it. Right. We know it. We know how much it weighs. That's a weight is a force, not a mass. So. I think when you look at it that way, then maybe you could argue that force is more fundamental than mass and mass is derived. But, okay, we're focusing on the SI system. So these are the fundamental quantities. However, particularly in the United States, you might have to deal with U.S. customary. And it can get confusing if you have problems where you, where you have pounds mass, pounds force, slugs. How do you deal with a pound force and a, and a slug and a pound mass. You can convert between feet and meters easily. That's not a problem. You can convert with between rank and Kelvin, degrees Fahrenheit and Celsius. That's no problem. Okay. This is what you need to know. I'm going to lay this out for you. And then, and then you'll have no issue. So Newton's, Newton's second law. F is equal to M A. In SI units, this is very simple. One Newton is equal to one kilogram times one meter per second squared. And the gravitational constant is 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay? This is SI. Now, what about in U.S. customary, one pound force is equal to one slug times one foot per second squared. The gravitational constant is 32.2 feet per second squared. And then one slug is equal to 32.2 pounds mass. This is U.S. That's everything you need to know. If you're good with unit conversions, it, it might be a, a little bit more of a tedious process when you're doing a problem in English units. But you can, you can get through everything you need to know with this. One conversion factor you'll typically see is that one pound force is equal to 32.2 pounds mass feet per second squared. You'll see this conversion factor a lot. But look at what this is. You're just taking, you're taking this one slug and replacing it with the 32.2 here. You see, so you don't really need to, you don't, you just need to memorize this. Okay, so the last thing I want to do in this video is do a few unit conversions just to help you get a little more comfortable with units. 
So one thing that always intimidated me was that you have these vast array of different units, acres, pints, quarts, liters, gallons. But if you know how to do unit conversions, all these units shouldn't be intimidating to you. Because once you find out what quantity that unit is, is it an area, is it a distance, then you can either find that conversion factor directly through a Google search and just make sure that your reference that you find on Google is, is, is a quality reference. Or you can find conversion factors that can help you indirectly get the conversion you need. So if you find your conversion factor in terms of meters, let's say, then you can convert to meters and then you can find the conversion factor from meters to, let's say, feet. And then you've got, then you've got your unit, your distance in feet. For example, let's say you have three light years. And you want to know how many inches are in three light years. Well, the first question you ask is, what is a light year? Is that, is that, is that time? It says years. Is that time? Well, no, you'll find out that that's a distance. So let's say you want to know how many inches are in three light years. And you know that one light year is 9.461 times 10 to the 15th meters. So what do you do? Okay, you say one light year is... 9.461 times 10 to the 15th meters. Okay. Now, how many inches in a meter? One inch. is 0.0254 meters. So in three light years, you have 1.12 times 10 to the 18th inches. Okay, what if we wanted to know how many acres are in a square light year? Right, a light year is a unit of distance. So if we have one, square light year, how can we convert this to, to acres? Well, okay, we've got we've got this many meters in one light year, so let's square this. Now these units cancel. Okay? Now one acre is 4,047 square meters. Okay, so now these cancel. So we've got 2.21 times 10 to the 28th. Acres in one square light year. Okay, let's do one more. Let's pick a another unconventional distance. One nautical mile is 1,852 meters. So let's say we've got one pound force nautical mile. Okay, this is a unit of energy. It's a force times a distance. How many kilonewton meters are in one pound force nautical mile? Okay, let's, 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 let's find out. You have 4.45 newtons in one pound force. Okay, now you've got 1852 meters in one nautical mile. And then you've got a thousand newtons in one kilonewton. So now we're left with kilonewton meters.
8.24 kilonewton meters. One pound force nautical mile is 8.24 kilonewton meters. So you see, you can convert between any unit you want. If you see a unit that has a pound mass in it, you can convert between slugs, you can convert pound force to newtons, you can do any, you could, it's no problem at all. 